Howdy, tabletop RPG fans. Thank you for supporting this channel. I'm Wranglemy, Grand Poobah of Game Design. And this review's day topic is about RPG zines from Hydra Cooperative and Hopsbush. Yes, a gratuitous plug for my own games. RPG zines are classically 8.5 by 11 paper folded in half with a cardstock cover. Original D&D, Arduin, Cobalt's Ate My Babies. They all also add black and white artwork. Modern RPG zines can be black and white or full color and have a much higher production values. ZineQuest is a special time of the year when Kickstarter promotes RPG zines for crowdfunding. Many indie RPG publishers use the RPG zine format, including Hydro Cooperative and my own Hopsbush RPGs. Drive Through RPG and Lightning Source both allow print on demand in this format. I get the pages printed at Staples and use a long arm stapler. Azeroth Adventures Digest number one is a full color introduction to the land of Azeroth and its exotic places to explore and the colorful characters you will find there. It is 100% 5th edition compatible, but could easily be adapted for most any RPG system. This is Azure Adventures Digest number one by the, uh, the guys at Hydra Cooperative. And they have a number of different uh, uh, publishing options, um, including Armchair Planet is the brand that they publish this under. The book is uh, essentially just over 27 pages long with a, a, an ad for Comics Wellspring, the printer that they used uh, at the back, which allows you to get a discount on your printing. It includes the OGO license, uh, the, I, first of all, I have to say this about everybody at Armchair Planet, Hydra Cooperative. The production values on these are incredible. Their artwork is, is awesome. The writing is awesome. Everything about the game. And we're talking about folks like Trey Kazi, Jeff Call, Jason Schultes, uh, Jim Shelley, uh, Jack Spear. Andrea Kazi, just a, a, a great amount of talent coming together to, to publish this. The characters are uh, frankly incredible. Maps are beautiful. The story text is engaging and fun. The creatures, this is a fr frog akuda. It, uh, constantly amaze me with the creativity and the, the funny parts. Uh, characters that you can encounter along the way, Black Iris and Rare Bit Finn. Uh, things about uh, random motley pirates, names, occupations, notable traits, trinkets. Here's the stats for the two characters that they introduced. Uh, here's the uh, um, random pirate captains, names for pirate captains, the name of their ship, the known for traits uh, and exotic booty. They have encounters in the boundless sea, which is the uh, first part of the adventure. They have some ads to some of their other games. Uh, again, uh, more incredible artwork, uh, uh, the first race of exotic beings that you encounter on one of these islands. Uh, weird encounters at sea, a whole table of 10 different castaways and strange ghost ships and many different things that you can find along the way. Uh, one of the encounters that you will make is an NPC that might join your party, Cogburn Bullroar Steamalong. He is the uh, character at the front here and uh, uh, is an automaton or construct. More maps, 
the candy aisle. So this is an, uh, the second part of the adventure. Everything on this island is candy or made of candy. A side view map of the, the volcano and dungeon with then top down levels showing what the, the layout is. The candy temple and the village activity. More strange encounters. And uh, that's the end. So this was the 26 pages and then uh, some more ads. And uh, very much in a comic book format is this wonderful RPG adventure from, from the folks at Hydro Cooperative. I'm not going to kid you. This is a mouthful to say. Mortziger Sturm, the Mad Manticore of the Prismatic Peak, is another adventure in the land of Azur. It's also intended for 5th edition, but would easily be adapted to most any RPG system. Mortzinger Sturm, the Mad Manticore of the Prismatic Peak, is an adventure for fantasy role-playing games, specifically 5th edition, although it'll work for others, published by Armchair Planet or the Hydra Cooperative. It is, uh, um, once again, got the terrific artwork of Jeff Call and is written by Trey Cousy. It's the challenge to survive the magic mansion of the mad manticore wizard. The artwork, again, is terrific. They've got examples of the strange triangular shaped plateau that the manticore's mad mansion is on and some background for the game master that might be useful as they're doing the game some great examples again of characters that you'll meet along the way and um, overall, just a terrific book with the, the stat blocks, the adventure text, everything about the thing is going to make you as the game master laugh, and it's going to make your players laugh when you play the game. Uh, love this little imp in the bottle. And uh, throughout, uh, very much like other books with crazy boss monsters in them. There's sayings by Mort Zinger Sturm throughout helping the game master to set the tone and, and keep things going. Love these goblins. And everything about this adventure is just a pleasure to go through, read, even if you never play it, you're going to be inspired to put some crazy shenanigans into your own adventures. Uh, very much a comedy uh, effort and um, fits right in with the kind of RPG zines that I love to have in my own adventures. Uh, they actually have a, a, a board game of the entire adventure, uh, The Race to the Wim Wham Stone, uh, as a, as a centerpiece to the book and uh, I thought that was very clever of them to put in the oubliette of the mistakes and many more crazy locations with crazy encounters and very creative solutions for players to come up with uh, some terrific Examples of characters that you can take in Astra, Brother Mudwort, uh, Sir Clangor, and then their stat blocks, and then Min Maxius the Mighty, a dwarf fighter, Moonflower the Elf Ranger, and again, just 
wonderful characters, Wolf Howlin and Zabra Cadabra. And then a whole list of stat blocks for all kinds of monsters and encounters that you might uh, find along the way as you're exploring the Mad Manticore's mansion. Highly recommend this book as one of the ones that you can add to your collection to get some terrific role-playing comedy. Kaboomkin RPG is eight pages, including covers, and packs an entire RPG and setting material into a very small space. This is an example of SMAF RPG, smaller, faster, funnier role-playing games. It is a post-apocalyptic comedy RPG about magical beings in a dangerous mutated world with no magic and some very funky technology. Imagine Mad Max meets the Smurfs. So I'm very pleased to be able to show off uh, um, my Kaboom Ken RPG. Uh, this is uh, eight pages published by myself, uh, printed at Staples and uh, stapled together with my long arm stapler here in my apartment. Uh, Kaboomkin is uh, a, a post-apocalyptic RPG of cartoon fair tale mayhem and uh, it prefers action over uh, tactics. And uh, it has a, a wonderful setting uh, of a magical fairy tale existence that ends in a horrible apocalypse, the great Kaboom. And uh, many years later, the Kaboomkins come crawling out of their underground vaults to the Bramble Slag, which is the magical jungle, mutated jungle that, that exists now that their, their world is gone. Uh, so the entire storyline and setting here on one page, how to play the game on the second page uses the technique that the distance between the tips of your fingers is typically around five inches. And yes, I know there are people who have long or awkwardly shaped fingers that might have different different dimensions, but uh, I use five inch increments on the table when I'm measuring out distances. Uh, one column here on one page for player characters, one column for gizmology, the strange technology that exists in the Bramble Slag. The Bramble Boss, so one page for the Game Master for everything that they need to know about running the game. And then two pages of tables. The Mutant Monsters table with uh, an adjective, a creature, and a mutant power. The Scrap table with hats and gear, junk scrap, and food. Mission tables with uh, things that you might get out of a soda machine. MacGuffins that you might be searching for, and twists that can happen along the way. Scrapberg tables allow you to build a scrapberg, the small villages that exist in the in the thing. So you have the surnames of people that you might meet, the market stall that they operate, and rumors that they might be able to pass along to the players during their adventure. Um, played many times now at different conventions. It's uh, great for one-offs, and uh, uh, soon I hope to add an expansion to it that will make it great for campaign runs as well. Remember, it's time to blow stuff up. This episode is brought to you by Kaboomkin, the smaller, faster, funnier RPG of cartoon, fairy tale, post-apocalypse mayhem. It's time to blow stuff up. Get it now at www.kaboomkin.com. Thank you all for watching this episode. Hit like, subscribe, or ring the bell, or Booger will get you. If you want to see more videos like this, go to hopspush.com and buy an RPG or t-shirt. Do good, annoy evil, and bye-bye.